Face reality, people. Movies are dead. Games are dead. Narrative, dead. Media is nothing but neural trigger response and viral conditioning. Wait, what are you two talking about? All right, sports talk. That is it. Let's uh, start the video. All right, this is too raw for sports. One of my one of my favorites to watch. I think he's an interesting guy. Interesting takes, especially back. I have a problem with one of his baseball takes, but I'll do that another time. Cause I'm a baseball player slash fan. But basketball, I listen. To, I enjoy too raw man. I enjoy I enjoy the baseball video too, but it's just you know. It's a little, a little closer to home, you know? But, uh, all right, the name of this video is Alan Iverson puts both Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant ahead of LeBron. I do. <laughs> I do, too. Do you agree with that, Anthony? Off rip? Yeah, I agree. Okay, fair enough. All right, here we go. I'm letting him do shout-outs and everything. Bro. This is Two Raw Four Sports. All right, so <laughs> I fucking love to rock. Speaking, <laughs> boss. The mainstream sports media like to make this whole goat debate between two players, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. All right. Now, to be fair, <laughs> this whole goat argument, as I've said, uh, many people weren't around to remember this on social media, but this whole goat debate was stolen by the media. <laughs> Probably LeBron James, but originally this was a, a debate between Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. That is fucking true. I'm so I that's the era where I'm like I'm like a young man, right? I'm in my thirties, like mid yeah. mid to late thirties now, right? I'm like a young man in that little time period <clears throat> when like when Kobe's just fucking like he's the fucking man, bro. Yeah. Kobe's a fucking man. No one like yes, LeBron, like people are looking for LeBron to become like they're waiting for him to become the man. But Kobe, well, he's the man currently. Yeah, yeah. Kobe dominated for like ten years before that even was even like possible for LeBron to even take that man. And Kobe Kobe wanted to play him and he fucking lost to Dwight Howard, bro. <laughs> yeah. Kobe, that, that, they were supposed to play each other and he fucked that up. Yeah. Was that uh, was that a th- was was Kobe actually looking for LeBron in the face? Like, I don't know that. Yeah, he, he was to fucking Shit. play. He wanted to play LeBron. Everybody, bro. Everybody wanted him to play. <laughs> he said that was one of his biggest regrets. Like, oh, that he didn't get to play fucking LeBron. Oh, and shit. Uh, I didn't know that. I, I no, I, LeBron I knew the said media that. Hype was LeBron it. said that. LeBron said that's one of his biggest that he didn't. Uh, he didn't okay. get to play Kobe. <laughs> I know. I know that was. I know that was a media hype. That was 100 percent the media hype, bro. When you bought 2K, it's Kobe and LeBron, bro. <laughs> like those were yeah. like it was, that was it in that little time period. But for me, it was it was Kobe was the killer, man. He's like he if he's gonna fucking chew your fucking heart out, bro. Like like I watched something recently where it was like uh, Mario Chalmers was saying, uh, "Well, people didn't fear LeBron." <laughs> Right, it was it was one of the quotes he said, and because like guys like Kobe, if you talk shit about Kobe Bryant, right, when he's playing in that time, not the nice Kobe that you saw when he's retiring and he he already tore his Achilles and he's already basically on his way out of the league, yeah. not that nice guy Kobe. I mean Kobe in his prime, you talk shit about that guy, he's like MJ. He's gonna fucking kill you, bro. <laughs> he's gonna put fifty on you, bro. <laughs> And then you, you want to, might not even say a word about it either. He's just gonna just strictly talk shit while he's playing basketball. And then when the game's over, I'm like, well, you know, both teams played hard, and you know, I, I did. Both both teams played hard. We played try to play hard on defense. I mi- I missed some shots out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, but meanwhile, in the game, he's like, <laughs> he's talking like crazy. Like, good shooting jump shots in your fucking face. Good just swishing shit right in your fucking face. That that guy was a fucking killer. The Mamba shit, I think, is a real thing. To be honest with you, the mama, mama, mama mentality. mentality. <laughs> I think that's a real thing. He was an actual killer, and he was like, "I'm fucking winning, bro." Straight up, and LeBron was not like that, <laughs> from what I remember in that time period. There's only one time where I've ever seen LeBron like that type of fucking dude, and that was that game yeah. six in Boston, bro, where he had the demon eyes. I'm like, I was like, that's what I'm fucking talking. I remember watching that shit on TV, bro. I'm like, that's what I'm fucking talking about. 
where this guy demon looked like a fan. killer. Yeah, he looked like a fucking demon, bro. And he shit all over the fucking Celtics, man. I'm like, yes. That was when Rondo, yeah, that was when Rondo was going crazy. <laughs> I think yeah, I think Garnett was hurt or some shit like that. Fuck, I don't remember. But I know LeBron shit on all over the fucking Celtics. Yeah. Like he had something like he yeah, had a reason to. Rondo, yeah. I don't think I it Rondo had Rondo had like a forty twenty game, bro, like twenty assists. <laughs> I don't think it would have mattered the way, like, yeah. That was no, the only time I said no, they got it like they got it three two, and then LeBron won game six, game seven, bro. Yeah, he was like, I can't lose this, and it, whatever put him in that desperate spot to where he's like, I have to win. This is at remember, this is after the 2011. He lost to the Ma- Mavericks. Mavericks. Yeah. This so, is when he beat OKC. Like he literally, I, he never looked back after that shit. Yeah, after he beat the Celtics. That series, that game, was the turning point for him. Even though he's he he's so remember, fucked up after. He almost <laughs> choked. The, he choked this. He almost choked the second one to the Spurs, and then Ray Allen hit the shot. Yes, as a and then Kawhi came the next year and destroyed them. <laughs> That was Kawhi Leonard's coming out party, and then LeBron ran away to Cleveland. As yes, as guys like, and once again, when I'm talking about two raw. Like, I don't think he's a hater. I don't think he's a LeBron hater. I, I, I think, I think he hates him, but he hates him with like reason. Like there's a reason for him. Like in, at least in his mind, there's a reason why he hates this motherfucker. And I, I understand. So when he says things like. Like yeah, every time like when his back's against the wall, he he runs away. He'll run to he'll run somewhere else. When he get, he gives up on the Heat, runs to back to Cleveland. G- gives up on Cleveland when Kyrie leaves it leaves right. Yeah, it runs to LA. Like <laughs> I mean, there's there's a point there. Even though I think he hates him, but he's not like a hater. If that makes sense. Like he's not going out of his way to make shit up to like hate on LeBron. Yeah. I think he has some points. Not like an angry old who's fan. <laughs> I don't think he makes shit up, but I think he like he, he, zo- he zooms he in. He will omit. Yeah, he will omit <laughs> any positive. <laughs> yes, exactly. He will zoom in on all the bad shit LeBron does. But all right, let's keep this video going. Point is, yes, Kobe was the fucking man in that time period. Here we go. Some 10, 15 years ago, which makes sense because they both play the same position, has similar size, similar similarities to their games. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> Alan Iverson was recently interviewed by Ramona Shelburne of ESPN. And to the dismay of the dick licks everywhere, not only does he have Michael Jordan ahead of LeBron Ramon James, he also has Kobe Bryant ahead of LeBron Ramon James. So this is what AI said. I, I couldn't find the audio for it, so I have to read it. This is what Alan Iverson said. I put a link to this article in the pinned comment in the comment section below. With Kobe, it was so different. He was like, Phil, I want the assignment. Take Fisher off him. I want the assignment. I've never seen anybody competitive like him. When people talk about the best players in the world, I say Mike and I say Kobe. And then everyone else. <laughs> LeBron is definitely after that. So that's the Iverson quote, right? I think. I don't know if he's still good. Let me see if he's still good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yo. All right, oh, that, you. that ding indicates that that was the end of the Allen Iverson quote. <laughs> but it's like, Here's the thing, right? I'm not a basketball player, but I watch when I watch sports. I watch with intelligence, as I hope most fans do. But I don't think they do. I don't think most fans do that. I think most fans are like, "Whoa, holy shit! Some shit I can't do. Oh my god, amazing!" Like maybe it's because of like my athletic bathroom. Like I could a- athletic background. Like I can maybe I can still can dunk a basketball. <laughs> I'm kind of old now, but. You know, when I was younger, I'd fucking, I could jump out the fucking gym, right? I could, I could do athletic things. So when you see someone doing it on TV, like you understand what they're doing. And 
along with that athleticism comes a skill set of like how they're doing it, how smooth they're doing it. Right. There's, there's Derek Rose, like kind of bumbling to the bat, even though it looks like crazy, crazy, it is crazy athletic, but it's not smooth to where it's like, maybe people could see that that dude might get injured one day based on the way he's landing and the way he's moving Mm -hmm. around like that and shit. But then there's like, yes, violent. Yes. That's the perfect word for it. It's very violent. It's fucking, uh, I don't know, like like Gary Sheffield and basically like his swing, yeah. his swing in baseball is fucking violent. Yes, and then there's Steph, there's smooth guys like that, right? Or smooth. Kyrie. Everything is smooth, yeah. Like Kyrie too, Kyrie. Everything is smooth. Yes, and it's like you, even without being an expert at the sport or playing pro in the sport or going watching every single fucking game or whatever the fuck, right? There's something you could just tell that where it's like there's something really skilled happening here, right? But just by yeah. body movements, like you know, someone sat down, sat in a fucking gym, and learned how to do this over and over and over again, and then had the willpower, the mental willpower, to use it in a game and repeat that over and over, even when they fuck up, right? People bring up Kobe's like first playoff games against the Jazz, right? And he airballs the shots. And he comes back the next year and he's just fucking shitting on people. Right? He starts yeah. dominating. Like the mental willpower to be like, I need to be able to repeat this movement over and over and over again because like to create success. And it's and like he would take he would watch other people. He would watch Dirk. And he'd be like, yes. oh, I'm gonna take that from you. I'm gonna take that from you and make it my own. Yes. A, a student of his craft. Like. Yes, it's not a weekend warrior thing with Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. It's like this is clearly practiced and mastered in a gym. And then to actually make it mastered is to do it in the game and then do it over and over in the game. Even when you're shooting fucking six of 24 from the field, right, in basketball terms, right, even with that, at like you, you stick to it because you know there's something that you can get from this to where if I'm hitting my shot, that that's game over. No one's fucking stopping me now. If I can hit this little this little fadeaway mid range to where no one can defend it, or like even like 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 with Dirk Nowitzki, right? If Dirk's hitting that at seven feet tall, hitting these little fadeaway one no foot fucking no fadeaway jump shots, no one's yeah, blocking no one. it. You're fucked, right? It's over. So yes, the mastering is in the game, and yeah, Kobe fucking had that shit. LeBron, eh, eh. <laughs> It seemed like he, he tried some things sometimes and then just didn't stick to it. Maybe the game didn't demand it of him, but at the same time, it's like, you are, un, like, imagine LeBron, I said this earlier before I started recording, like, imagine LeBron James today, like, today on the Lakers, where he still has this amount of athleticism and strength and shit, but he can also hit fadeaway post-up mid-ranges. Yeah. Like, guess what? No one's fucking stopping him. This is this is why guys are saying Jordan can score forty points a game today. Like prime Michael Jordan can score forty, or Kobe prime Kobe can score forty in today's game. That's why these guys are saying that because LeBron's scoring what twenty. Yeah, and essentially, like oh, like he's um he's prolonged his career that way by um being the height he is, as, as, as strong as he is, as fast as he is. Yep, he's able he's able to still pump out a certain um a certain um ground floor that is like acceptable for his age. Like, oh look yeah. what he's doing at this age. Oh, it's exceptional. But then, yeah. Go ahead. But then it's like um then there's like this oh there's this very I don't know, like he's um the whole landscape of that discussion, Jordan and LeBron and um how good is LeBron actually yeah, it's so hard to quantify because the league is changing. It has been changing true. for the last fifteen <laughs> to twenty years, and it's still changing today. Fucking true. Where it's like, true. where like, I'm sorry, there's a bar that's starting to be lowered and lowered and lowered, and he's he's being benefited by it. True. What I mean by that is like, um, the way the refs call the game. The rule changes, yes. the way the rules are interpreted as they are, which is a whole other fucking discussion. 
Bro, the... and um, the way stats are being counted, like there's a, a mirage of things that yes. make this guy look a certain way that he probably wouldn't look prior years. True, fucking hundred percent, fucking true. Like there's shit. Like if I if you took me at whatever uh, seventeen, eighteen years old, where I'm playing high school basketball, right? You take that guy, you put him in a fucking time machine, and move him to today's game, and I yeah. watch and I watch Luca do a step back three or James Harden do a step back three. I'm like, they're traveling. That's a travel in my mind, just instinctually. I'd be like, that's traveling. Yeah, but it's different. It's different now. Hundred percent now. It's well, I, I get it. It looks cooler and it's more entertaining to watch, and it's it's very crafty looking. But there's no way. It, a guy in the nineties, even early two thousands, are getting away with that shit. They might get away with carries in the early two thousands, as I talked about before with the what's his name, uh, Tim Donaghy. He talked about the game where they fucking hosed Allen Iverson because because uh, all right, yeah. here's just here's kind of the, the the short end of the story. Allen Iverson like said something to a ref that the ref didn't like, and then Tim Donaghy and his crew, whatever whoever whatever refs were out there. During Allen Iverson's next game, they fuck. They start calling carrying on him because it officially in the rules he was carrying. He was like, and I love, I loved watching Iverson, and I don't think it's like so egregious to where you have to call it every time he does it, like his crossovers and shit like that. But it is technically a carry. Like if you go back to like 1950s, they'd call a carry on him every time he dribbles a fucking basketball. It is what it is. So these rules are up in, up to interpretation, and as time has gone by, all the way up to today's game, the rules have been loosened to a, a in my opinion, a large extent for many different rules besides just carrying. The traveling is different. <laughs> we see guys travel quite a bit. Yeah. The off the offensive fouls, like it's kind of so arbitrary instead of like a grounded rule. It's it's so subjective to the referees. And let's be honest, it's not the referees, the fucking league. The league tells the league. you what's yeah. what we're gonna call today and what we're not gonna call today. The the league fucking tells you that, and it's fucking crazy. But uh, you know, NBA's rigged. You know what it is. <laughs> All right, I don't even know where we were. Like, I just went off into a tangent, but it's sports talk. Accept it. All right, here we go. You know. It's interesting that people tend to like dismiss Kobe in this argument. They go to argument. Beyond my mind, and why they, that happens. They, they, re- they, they, they sort of reinvent history. You know, you had Draymond Green come out last year and had the nerve to say <laughs> that it's Draymond. Was the best player in the, NBA, uh, in the NBA from 2005 onward, which is poppycock. Because LeBron didn't pop up as. LeBron wasn't even in the best player conversation in the NBA, to be honest with you, until maybe, maybe. 2012? He started popping up around 2011-ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But really, I would say maybe 2012, 2013. Yeah, that's what I would say, the 2012. Now, are you and him talking about... uh, the best player in the league or best player ever conversation? Like which one? Oh, oh, I'm talking about best player in the league. I think he's, I think he is too. That's my guess. I think he's talking about like LeBron never came up as like the best player in the league until let me rewind just a little bit. Let me rewind a little bit. I think he's talking about the league and not like, cause you, you have yeah. to, you have to, you got to win chips first. Right. And if he's talking about 2011, he didn't win one. Yeah. Yet. He didn't win one until 2012. So. Let's, let's, let's see what he's because LeBron didn't pop up as LeBron wasn't even in the best player conversation. I think he, I think he means league. Like until maybe maybe he started popping up around 2011 ish, maybe. But really, I would say maybe 2012, 2013. From 2005 to 2013, 
it was generally Kobe Bryant. It was, especially with that Olympic shit. Yeah, it was fucking Kobe. Kobe. Sorry. Authorities. Uh, when I say authorities, I mean basketball authorities. Uh, I don't know where this. I wasn't an authority, but I grew up in that era. Trust me, it was fucking Kobe, and LeBron was there too, right? Because you know he, he had a high he had a high two K rating. You know, he's up there, yeah. but but Kobe was a fucking man, bro. Sorry, and LeBron. Everyone was just waiting for LeBron to become that guy. That's what was happening. We're, they're waiting for him to win that that big game or hit yeah. that that special shot that led to the finals or won the finals or whatever. That's what everyone was waiting for. So, but he's definitely like he was. It was like him and Kobe, basically the top guys, with some other names mixed around around them, depending on which side of 2005 to 2013, earlier or later. But yeah, do you agree with that, Anthony? Like, were you watching? Like, yeah, that? okay. He was um he was an up and comer. Yeah, basically. I mean, he ooh. was like, yeah, he was like anointed, like oh, the chosen one and all that, but. Kobe was the man. I think most of us were waiting for it to be passed to him from Kobe. Like, okay, this is Kobe's time yeah. period. And then when Kobe will pass it to LeBron. And then that's the, what, 2012 to 2013 era where it's like, what, what's, oh, LeBron, it's what's LeBron? Like late 20s? I don't know. Late 20s or something? Yeah. 28. LeBron won when he was 28. 28 years old? Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Then the, the torch was passed at that point. But to say here and just skip past Kobe is insane insanity to me but all right, here we go BS is pop up where LeBron no as a matter of fact in the last 10 years LeBron has not won an MVP award in the last 10 years LeBron has won two championships Curry has won four so I mean was there really this one particular era crazy. where LeBron was just Dominate the NBA. He's got a fucking point, man. That shit was crazy, Because right when LeBron was apex LeBron with the Miami Heat, right? Golden State happened. Kobe, or yeah, Curry and those motherfuckers started coming in, bro. And then they start, they, people were talking about the Golden State Warriors like a dynasty, bro. And that's what, 2015 yeah. and on? Yeah. 2016 was crazy. 2015, 2016. They, they, played, these, they played in, uh, what was it? I thought they played in like four or five straight finals. They played in 20, 2015, 2016. That's when LeBron won it. Then 17 and, then and 18 with Durant. Then Durant came in. Yeah. yeah, so four, for yeah. four straight. They played four straight. And I think Giannis won in 19 or something. I don't know. But yeah. No, 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 oh, no, 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 um, It was uh, Toronto, 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 Toronto yeah. won in 19. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. four straight. Yeah, true. Go, go ahead. No, that's it. Like it's. Yeah. So that's <laughs> it's so it the the Warriors thing started in 2015, right? So that's like only four or five years for LeBron. <laughs> he, um, yeah. He. Uh... So that's what I'm wondering. So he he lost to the Spurs, left Miami, and then he that was the year that he played Golden State. He played. He went to the finals his first year with, yes. with Cleveland, right? Yeah, and Kyrie got hurt in game in game one. I think he got hurt. Yeah, he tore his ACL. And then they lost to the. They lost. Yeah, he was by himself. Yeah. They're like, oh, LeBron's by himself. I, th- I think Kevin, Kevin Love was hurt too. I think in that. Yeah, he was literally by himself. Yeah. And the next year, the three-one comeback with a caveat. <laughs> I, I, I watch a lot of LeBron hate videos, so yeah. yeah Dr- Draymond was, the, the Draymond, Draymond suspension, suspended. yeah, <laughs> and the Curry th- or uh, Curry throwing the fucking mouthpiece because the because he fouled out of a game like in some weird way. Like it's, yeah. it was actually kind of weird looking. And his his wife put out a tweet like, "Yo, this NBA's rigged, bro." <laughs> Do you remember that shit? Do you remember nah, that shit? Dude, that. what's her name? Aisha? Right? Aisha Curry. Aisha Curry. Yeah. She put out a tweet like, yo, NBA's rigged. They Because they, when they fouled out Steph, what was that, game six yeah. I think they fouled him out of? It might have been game six. Whatever game it was where they yeah. fouled him out. She's like, yo, the NBA's rigged. They made her take the tweet down and shit like that. 
that, that's crazy. Yeah. That was fucking nuts. Because I'm my mindset, I'm all into anything rigged. Like, yo, an NBA's rigged. Like, what? Let me fucking watch 20 videos on it. <laughs> Let me find out. Baseball's rigged. Steroid era? Yeah, I'm all in. Like, I'm all into that shit, bro. Yeah. But, uh, the the flake gate the flake gate yo <laughs> shit ring bro <laughs> yeah the fucking Patriots got secret moles with fucking lapel lapel fucking cameras on like studying the plays and shit yeah yeah uh, spy gate <laughs> they watching the, the the fucking practices of the other team <laughs> running the plays and shit they got cameras on booby tassels of the fucking cheerleaders and shit like yo we're <laughs> Checking these plays out, bro. We got 4K footage of these plays oh, right man. now. The Houston Astros are fucking smacking trash cans. <laughs> yeah. Sports is so the most corruption of all time, bro. It's Everybody so dirty. Fun. Oh, shit. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. The begging on trash cans. You can't make that it's up. <laughs> I'm fucking dead, bro. You can't make that up, bro. Like that's that's as grimy as it gets, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get a W. Bro. Nah, they they said they had an Apple Watch too. The Red Sox had an Apple Watch. <laughs> they were fucking seeing seeing signs or whatever. Hey, well, let's be honest, guys. If if you're one of those people that are like you, know, <laughs> you conspiracy theorists, sports could be rigged, like. Look, like honestly, look at it, bro. There, yeah. there's so much fucking money on the line with these things. There's so much money on the line. How could you not? Like, someone might take, like, like God forbid, someone no, might take advantage to try to like. No, 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 no. Better yet, let's say like, oh, like, like these fucking uh, the Italian guys, they were doing this shit, right? <laughs> yeah. And they were like, um, like threatening college kids or whatever. Yeah. It's like, what's the next step after that is having institutions <laughs> like literally <laughs> rig every aspect of it in a way where, where it's like you don't even need to talk to these kids or none of that shit. It's already preordained beforehand. Like, it's super, it's beyond the pale of imagination. Like, all this shit they do, they put a magnet in the ball, they fucking. <laughs> They're telling the refs you can only interpret the rule this way and that way and this way for this game. Like, oh. Yo, we're caught, we're we're man. They do that shit in the NFL all the time. We need you to call more holdings. We need you to call <laughs> yes. more passing. All that shit is like it's like you're putting objective things that everyone has to follow. But there's a there's a god which is called the fucking rules committee <laughs> or whatever, the, where they decide how things are done subjectively but to be portrayed objectively. <laughs> what you're describing I mean, is literally Tim Donaghy in that fucking... Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like this guy too much, the, the DJ Vlad dude. I don't like him too much, but he did it. Yeah. But Tim Donaghy did the interview on there, right? And I'm watching it. Yeah. And he said, like... Instead of making it like so blatant that like, hey man, we're gonna rig this in favor of the Lakers tonight. Instead of something like that, it was more of a, hey guys, here's a video. The league sent us a videotape. Look at this. Here's how many foul calls that were missed in the Lakers game the other night. <laughs> the Lakers were getting fouled all over the place and no one called it. So I wanted to be on your like P's and Q's this game and make sure you make those calls for the Lakers. Tonight. Like instead, it's some, it's little, some yeah, slimy yeah, looking like shit like that, bro. Some slimy yeah, yeah. looking shit. It's a wink and a nod, nod. Like, yeah, you you know what you have to do today. <laughs> I think today, to like in today's world, I think sports fans are catching more on to shit like that. But I think it's, I I think we've barely seen a layer of the onion of what could be possible with these things. Not, I'm not. Once again, I'm not full blown, quote unquote, tinfoil hat about it. But I think there's like something to be looked at man, with a yeah. lot of these things. There's so much. There's so much money on the line. I don't know why. Anyone would think that there's like, no, no, everything's well, perfectly well, fine. Well, dude, it's like we could do a whole other video on this. Look no <laughs> further, than, look no further than legalized gambling. 
Oh, true. They, exactly. They know better in every league, and they, they have a fucking prop bet. Hey, Gronk is going to kick a, a, a field goal for the Super Bowl. You can bet on – you can be team yes. make field goal or team miss field goal. <laughs> and there's $10 million in prop. Like, bro, like, that's the tip of the iceberg. Yes. We're going to give you a prop bet today. Oh, yo, my, my cousin, yo, my cousin, he he plays this shit all the time. Yo, he's telling me, yo, I've been making so much money on, on doing unders. He says, I do Derek White under every day. <laughs> I'm making hundreds of dollars on Derek White, all these other players. So it's like, come on, bro. Oh, my God. Isn't ESPN starting one, too? I saw it recently. ESPN bet or something like that? <laughs> Yo, so, um, oh, yeah, Dan Levitard did a show on that, too. Really? Sort of removed for that. Oh, yeah, 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 they cover all that. They do some, they got some good videos on it. I'm not going to lie. Something that, it's some thought-provoking videos. Okay. And it'll give you some insight about, like, the economics, I guess. Okay. But, yeah, ESPN, um, I mean, that's, that's like a tangent. I don't want to make, long story short, there's a sports book. That bought bar stool, right? Okay. And they and they made a bar stool sports book. And so, um, I I think I told you about this, like months ago. But anyways, Maybe. they um their venture didn't wasn't profitable and whatever. They had to drop bar stool. And so ESPN partnered with this sports book. I don't know the sports book's name, but. So yeah, and ESPN invested in the sports book or whatever. Like they're like partners with them. So they're going all in on now. They have their own betting yeah. like sports book, basically. Yeah. When they used to and, do uh, ESPN breaking news, someone got caught gambling or someone gambled on this or gambled like ESPN used to do that shit, bro. And well, now they guys, have their own thing, bro. It's crazy. Well, it's like, it's funny to you and me. It's funny to other people. They might think it's a real thing. Where, like you and me, know there's no such thing as like beyond the like like a a, a, a vanguard um, journalistic integrity with this <laughs> shit. Like everybody, like human beings, are covering other human beings, and shit's gonna happen. They're gonna choose yeah. sides. They're gonna have biases. Yeah. <laughs> so these guys are like, yeah, like so. There's always gonna be like. They take themselves seriously. Like, oh yeah, we're uh, we're serious journalists or whatever. But the, anyway, the beacon of integrity. Yeah, there's the now. There's going to be questions about how, like, like how how fucking serious are ESPN's reporters or whatever. And um, even like um, even um, you know that you know that famous guy Adrian Wojnarowski. Yes. Woj and shit. Yeah. Where he's like, where he like, so he's like, probably him and Adam Schefter are like the biggest ones that work for ESPN and shit. And it's like, those guys are going to be fucking so much more valuable now that they're doing the sportsbook shit. As far as the information they give on injuries really? and trading. Oh my God, yours. Yes. Like, their importance, at the fact that ESPN has those two in their arsenal. <laughs> and now they're into sports gambling. Like that's I don't even think I, I I just thought that shit right now. I don't think anybody's really honing in on that shit. Bro, is that like instant it feels like insider trading, man. It feels like that. Like the vibe of that. Like these guys are getting the reports earlier than anyone else as far as like inside sources have told me today that, you know Well think about it, they fucking own, Tyreek Hill they is as a hurt ankle yeah. or whatever the fuck. Like I doubt I doubt they can suspend an Adrian Wojnarowski the way the NFL suspended Calvin Ridley for playing on FanDuel. He's a wide receiver. I didn't know NFL. that. I didn't know that. Really? He got, suspended. he got suspended because he tore his ACL and he wasn't playing, but he was betting on the NFL. And the NFL had a way of they through through an through a third party with the fucking sports book he betted on. They verified that he betted from his phone, and it was him making the bet, and then he got suspended for a whole year for that. Really, that's yes. fucking. Cr I didn't know that. I didn't know about that. 
But I'm wondering, would they do that to Adrian Ward? Not if Adrian Ward no, nasty, fuck no. If he knew the Joel Embiid towards ACL, would he bet on the next Sixer game? Like, would he know? And he knew, he knew an injury no one else knew prior to a game, like five minutes before a game. Would he bet on? It? There's no league investigating. He's Adam Schefter, the Woj dude. There's no league investigating. Like, they're not gonna. I'm telling you, bro. That they'll be fine. That that's in fact what oh, you yeah, just brought up is fucking crazy. I haven't heard that before. That's fucking crazy to think about. Oh yeah. No, but I'm just saying it's it's funny how like all that shit worked like that 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 really does open Pandora's box. Legalized buddy. <laughs> oh my god. Also, like yeah, like um. The refs, like Chris Paul's record when this ref is officiating uh, his team is yeah, like yeah. 11, 11 and 25 in, play, in playoff games. Or James Harden has a 21 and 10 record when this when this official is officiating his, his, his playoff game. You're about uh, like, Scott Foster for uh, Chris Paul. Yeah, Scott Foster. Yeah. <laughs> God dang, bro. And it's like, bro, I know this shit because there's people that are investigating this shit so they can make a more uh, intelligent decision on betting. <laughs> so if they're doing that shit, imagine like like high rollers or even people in these leagues themselves or on the teams. <laughs> ah, damn. All right, I'm going to try to get back to the video, but I just want to say this one. Were you... Was it? Were you the one I was talking to when I was like, ah, "Fuck!" I think it was Teddy, where I was like, uh, "I was doing some some fan duel right with the uh, with the NBA," and yeah. th- and there was like a a probable label under LeBron and AD, right? Oh yeah, they play. I think you told you were telling me, and then they both ended up playing. Yeah, to where like there's a time limit, right? To where you can get your fucking bets, your fantasy bet. It's, yeah. it's a it's a little fucking twenty five cent thing, right? I'm not gambling big money or anything i'm just saying but yeah. like there's like a time limit to where you can get your fucking picks in and yeah like that. so like six o'clock at night or something like a game like an hour before it has to be it something like that hours. something like that right and i'm like yeah they, they keep, keep they hold on to this day. shit so like the le- like we yeah, need to see what he does during warm-ups it all day. <laughs> it'll start one way in the morning it'll be another one but right before you gotta decide but meanwhile a Woj or the NBA version of Adam Schefter will fucking know this shit already, right? All the time, yeah. They will know, like, yeah, this guy's playing or this guy's not. We're like sitting here relying on Google searches. These motherfuckers are talking to fucking inside office people or trainers yeah. or whatever the fuck, coaches, players. Yeah, it's like almost, it's funny. It's funny. It's like they have an auction license. To buy cars, fucking at the auction. <laughs> so they're, not, they're on the know. They know which cars crash, which cars not. But they're trying to sell you cars. <laughs> I'm gonna add this shit into the title. I don't, I don't know what we call it, but something to do with. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll think of it later. But something to do with this weird shit in sports, other than the the yeah. two raw video. But all right, let's finish this up. Minute left. Like Jordan in the nineties. Go back a little bit. Championships, Curry has won four. So, I mean, was it really this one particular era? Like five years, LeBron I think LeBron was the, NBA? the full domination like of LeBron. Jordan in the 90s? Winning, that is. Winning. That or is. Kobe in the 2000s? Or Magic in the 80s? Or Kareem in the 70s as far as uh, MVP awards? You say Magic and Bird probably in the 80s, right? No. no. Yep. So, <laughs> as a matter of fact, some would tell you Kobe was, a, in some ways, a more refined version of Michael Jordan. He was. And better handles. In my opinion, this like, but I think if Jordan had to learn these things, he would learn them. Yeah, in my, in it's my the opinion. same thing with LeBron. Honestly, it's the same thing with LeBron. Except, like, I don't know. That's kind of where it comes full circle with me, where uh, I wanted to talk about something else in, in regards to the NBA at large, where he is, he is a benefactor 
of certain standards being derided in the NBA as far as defense <laughs> and um, court awareness, like playing as a team, playing defense as a team, where it's more about isolation, isolation in regards to one-on-one with LeBron. And obviously he's a big man. He didn't have to learn those things the same way Jordan didn't have to be as fine-tuned as Kobe. True. Yeah. But there's other factors where he didn't have the killer instinct. And the killer instinct is not – it's it's almost like it's not just a killer instinct. It's also being technically sound at a certain – um, yes. at a certain facet of the offense that literally, like, you can separate yourself from anyone. You, you're strong enough and athletic enough on one dribble to create the space needed to take a, a, a fairly open mid-range shot which is something even Kobe, as he got older, had a, a lot harder time. That's why he started putting his back to the basket. He needed to create separation, yes. which he's doing. He found, he found that putting his back to the basket and doing it that way was a lot easier as time went on, whereas LeBron, to this day, LeBron could get his shot off on one dribble, especially with this, NBA, this current NBA. The problem is it's not probable he can make a 17-footer reliably. <laughs> True. It's especially as as the game gets old, gets longer in the game. Yeah. As he gets, as the game goes on, it becomes harder and harder for him to do that. Whereas like KD can still do that shit. I see Kawhi doing that shit all the time. Paul George can do that shit. Yep. Yeah. And these guys don't get the fucking calls LeBron gets when he's around the ring. <laughs> I mean, does Zion even get those calls that LeBron gets? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't seen enough of, of Zion, but I've seen him so oh, He can't get him. He can't sit in the fucking court. <laughs> well, yeah. I've seen him where he's like barreling into fucking people and shit. He doesn't get fucking calls like that. And he he looks so much like they, they, they're they fucking up his, his, his height listing because he looks way shorter than everyone. Like LeBron like, actually looks like height wise no. with other motherfuckers. Zion, seven, Zion, Zion looks so short compared to everyone else. I thought he was 6'7. Six seven. Okay, that might be right. Six 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 seven. Because he, he just looks shorter, but he, like when he jumps, yeah, he, he's he like is. frantic in the air, like fucking getting rebounds and shit. It's crazy. No, yeah, he's like um, he's like um, what's his name? He's like a little taller than uh, Draymond. No, man, he looks he looks shorter than Dray. Like for me, I don't know if it's my eyes or he something. Draymond six five. No, Draymond's like six seven, bro. I think Zion's like six 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 seven. I think they're like really close, but I think Zion's a little shorter, but bulkier. Yeah, Draymond, Draymond might be taller. Well, Draymond's skinnier, so Draymond he might would be look six eight, man. He might be six. I don't know. Six yeah, seven, six kid. eight. Like like Zion looks more like Charles, like Barkley, <laughs> more than like yeah, I got you. more than LeBron, man. But this dude's like working his ass off. Like when he t- when he goes to the basket to shoot, a, like he's he's working his ass off to get the layup up in the first place, and then he's like double or triple jumping to get an offensive rebound yeah. and like tip yeah, it up. That's, that's not gonna. That's why he keeps getting hurt. Bro. That, that's a lot of effort. That's a lot yeah, to do. He's on D row shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, LeBron developed a mid range fucking jump shot for once. It's probably too late for that, but. Yeah. All right. Here we go. A little bit more in the bag. Deeper range. True. Not to say it was greater, but more refined. It's fair. You can make that argument, I think, so, for yeah. Kobe versus Michael as far so as to AI. refinement. How much you guys think? All right. That's it. Okay. Uh, I, I'm agree with AI right now. Like, as far as just just your eyes, just watching the game. Right, right uh, once again, like forget about you're a basketball expert or you know all the statistical categories or everything. Just, just if you ever been to ath- into athletics and you've done something athletic in your life and you just look at someone moving around, like come on, like Kobe, like has LeBron ever touched anything Kobe's done? Skill wise, in basketball, like no. 
Let's be let's be honest. No. And then MJ, you have once again like moving around the skill the skill gap is just there like what I, I played a lot of first person shooter games right video games not a lot but i play some and there's a thing called skill gap to where it's like okay this guy can do this and you can't you want to know why it's not because right these gamers aren't the most athletic people on the fucking planet obviously there's hand-eye coordination and shit like that but there, there's a skill gap as like someone develops something over a period of time that you did not develop and the, the skill gap is obvious well guess what that same thing in my opinion applies to someone like lebron and kobe or lebron and jordan i think there's a skill gap yeah i think you don't i think lebron doesn't have the basics the basics of this thing in order to catch up to kobe at this time period like he's it's too late in my opinion Right, Michael MJ. I think the the base skill set he has, he could replicate. He could do what Kobe does, and maybe even more efficient of what Kobe does. Kobe just like developed all these crazy fucking counters and counters to counters and counters to counters to counters and all that shit. Right, all this like kind of brilliance, honestly, like a fucking maestro playing basketball. He developed those things, and MJ didn't have to apparently based on the way they were running things right he played mj got to play like Shaq as a shooting guard towards like i can do a i have like five moves i can do and whichever option i pick you can't stop it thus i don't need to fucking do anything else crazy right now that's the way it seemed kobe try probably added a little bit more to his bag but I think MJ could he has the body type, he has athleticism, he has obviously the will to do it, and a base skill set to do it. But if you can't just hit simple mid ranges consistently, to where it's like if you don't if you don't put a hand all up in my face, I'm making this shot. If you don't have that thing there, yeah, good good luck developing skills like Kobe Bryant. And I can see why a guy like Allen Iverson would be like. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can't fuck with Kobe or Jordan like that. I played against both of them. These guys have counter, have moves and counter moves. Good luck fucking stopping them as far as like, and, and it's in ranges that aren't like, they're like awkward ranges. They're not like, uh, they're not just going to bowl you over or shoot from 35 feet away. They're gonna get crafty in a certain range towards like I already I already seen it I already seen this defense before. I'm gonna find a way around it. I'm gonna turn over this shoulder or spin over this shoulder and I'm gonna fade you and I'm gonna fucking hit it. And now you're fucked. If I'm making that shot, you are fucked. And guess what? This is the this is the only shot I've been working on all summer. You're you are now super fucked. <laughs> like that type of shit. That's what I that's what I think people were looking for from LeBron. All right. They were looking for some Tom Brady shit. Where it's like you found some way to find some things that good luck stopping that. It never happened. And it never really happened. It's kind of skipped him to where it's like, how the fuck do you stop Steph Curry? And then people find start throwing different schemes at him, right? Well, and... it's also um, it's also like um, he he is more interested in. Being the center of every every facet of the of the operation, than even winning. So it's like um, the coach has to basically do what he wants him to do. He wants his players. He wants to play at his his rhythm, his style of basketball and shit. And so um, it, it, like anything else, if you do any, if you if you like. If you don't do things in moderation, like shit's not gonna work. <laughs> like you, can, if you continue to do the same thing over and over again, it's the definition of insanity. I'm so, gonna, I'm gonna slightly disagree with you. I, I think no. it's, I think it's, he wants to win, but it has to be because of him. <laughs> that sounds bad. Like no, I, I don't, I don't know no, the guy, I, but I, I agree with that. Maybe that's where I was trying to go with it. But it's like, um. It's also like 
like um hell or high water. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, don't worry about it. We're still going to go full fledged the way I want it to go. <laughs> well, if it doesn't like work out, even, if it doesn't work out, you got to present the idea like it was his idea, not your <laughs> idea. Well, if it doesn't if it doesn't work out, and I've seen some videos, and it's, it seems like. Yeah, you know, if it doesn't work out, then guess what? It's it's Darvin Ham's fault. Darvin Ham's not calling yeah. the right plays. He's not putting the right rotation yeah. in, the right defense yeah. in. Or, <laughs> we, need to, we need to make some trades here. I don't have the right yeah. personnel around me. Which, once again, this is a, some super famous celebrity guy, famous athlete, one of the best basketball players ever. LeBron James, right? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like. But at the same time, it's like from the outside. Sorry for most normal people over here. From the outside, it that's what it looks like, man. I'm sorry, because like I don't know, D'Angelo Russell. Like, look at this, the team he has around him. Like Anthony Davis is like one of the, he's like one of those guys dominating in college. Comes to the NBA, starts dominating there. Obviously injury yeah. pro- injury prone for sure, for sure injury prone. But a dominant player when he does play. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, straight up, he can score and he can pass. That's what I understand about the guy. He can score a fucking basketball and he can hit. He has. He's a good passer. Uh, the emergence of Austin Reed, like the, these players that are around him, like it's like man, is that as good a team as this guy right on screen right now, Allen Iverson, when he took him to the fucking finals? No. No. <laughs> right. Granted, the East wasn't the fucking shit back then, right? It wasn't the, the biggest deal, the East back mm-hmm. then. But he still took like that team was nowhere near something that like LeBron has right now. It, I don't know. No, no, no. And it's all it's it's not it's all it's like it all coalesces on the court. If he's not if he's not in control of the ball, he doesn't care about how that affect. I mean, if if if, if the if the the flow of the game isn't. Isn't isn't being um, initiated by him. He doesn't care about how it looks. And what I mean by that is, he's taking away like proper spacing, proper proper management of of certain players like on the court at the same time with him. And then that manifests itself on the other side of the court. So it's so it's like he's literally disrupting the entire flow of the game. And that's basically, and so <laughs> when he was playing defense and he was like fucking Superman, that shit could work. He could fucking mask away those discrepancies, and and um, and he could um, he can make do with it with a fucking uh, Sean, Ma- Sean um, Mario Chalmers <laughs> or a Mike Miller or these guys. These are he just want he needs people to move out the fucking way so he can get his thirty. And then be ready to take a shot when he kicks it out. And so when that when that formula doesn't work, that's where he, he starts fucking. <laughs> oh no no! And so he needs them to be spot up shooters and take and 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 fucking be excellent fucking shooters. And he also needs them to run down the court now and be great defenders on the other side and and defend <laughs> and defend two people for one body because he ain't gonna help you. <laughs> if you think about it actually if you think about it, like the best version of lebron james as far as like if he doesn't develop once again like a mid-range some type of like threat from the outside like a real threat from the outside to where it's like fuck we need to fully game plan for him jump shot jump shooting instead of making that the actual game plan of letting him take jump shots like where they have to actually scheme around his jump shots uh, yeah, he would be like Uber Draymond Green, like yeah. like Draymond, who's bigger, faster, stronger, quicker, better handles, better shooting. Like imagine that. Imagine him on the Warrior instead of Draymond. Imagine LeBron's there playing the same exact role. Like it'd be it'd be torture. It'd be torture for another team to like guard because who's he pat like if he drives and kicks, who's he kicking it to? Oh, the best shooters ever. All right, got it. <laughs> like, ever. No, forget about the world. The best shooters ever. Clay and, and Steph, bro, shooting the basketball. I, I've not seen anything yeah. like that. 
Clay is like shoots off his tippy toes without even jumping, bro. And he's like, when he was like in his, you know, in his prime heyday type shit, bro. He's just fucking unconscious shooting three point, like, like he's in the gym and no one else is there shooting three pointers, bro. And Steph is Steph. All right, imagine that shit around LeBron James. Like that's probably his perfect team. It's like, hey, you don't you don't need Steph to bring like Steph's like I don't need to bring the ball up. Clay obviously doesn't need to, need to bring the ball up. No. Imagine Dray or uh, it's LeBron James doing pick and rolls and shit with it, like running his style of offense to where if you say fuck it, we got to guard Steph and Clay. Like LeBron's just gonna dunk the ball on your fucking head. If you clog the paint, these motherfuckers are gonna splash threes all day and night, man, and it's over. That's probably his perfect destination right there. Yeah. yeah you know. And they all got to play defense because he's not playing it. It is what it is. Point is, yeah, I, I got Kobe ahead of LeBron. Just on something that you, I can't put into words because like, I'm not a statist- statistician or anything like that. And I just – this is the games I've watched as a kid – and as I gotten older, just the way they play and shit like that, Kobe is just I think he's way different than LeBron. I'm sorry, bro. I think he's a different animal. And I think AI apparently recognizes that as well. All right. Uh shout out to Two Raw for Sports. Maybe he'll see I'm gonna tag him in this. Let's see if he responds to it or watches it at all. It's a, it's gonna be like an hour long, but whatever. He's got time, bro. Come on. I'm making all those videos. You can watch one of the, one of ours. Too uh, rough. Too rough. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? <laughs> it was so really good. Oh shit! All right, there's our little uh, reaction.